Well, good afternoon. My name is Tony Carroll, and I want to welcome you to the 2020 Indiana 4-H Roundup virtual conference. This is uh, certainly not what we had planned originally. We were hoping to have everybody in, a, in our face-to-face -face format on campus, but uh, given the circumstances with COVID-19, we um, have been able to uh, bring this to you in a virtual format. And uh, the workshop that uh, uh, this is the second part of our series. The uh, first part was yesterday with uh, Michael Quaestus as our speaker, and he uh, presented a, a good uh, motivational speech, I thought, on um, give up or get up. And hopefully all of you got excited about that and have decided that you are going to get up and that you are greater than in your community. And uh, whatever that is, uh, um, you know, we want you to overcome several, whatever obstacle is placed in your way so that you can be the best that you can be and you can help uh, have the 4-H program be the best that it can be in Indiana and in your community. And so we certainly couldn't do this without the sponsors and sponsors are, to me, the sponsors are listed on your screen. Uh, certainly wanna recognize the Indiana 4-H Foundation for our, being our partner uh, with 4-H and, and uh, being able to secure the funding to be able to offer our 4-H Roundup and then our sponsors, Indiana State Department of Agriculture, Corteva AgriSciences and Series Solutions. We certainly appreciate uh, those uh, or uh, those companies being able to provide financial support so we can bring this um, activity to you. And so today I want to turn it over to Michael Quaestus, our speaker, uh, so that he can bring to you the second part of our series. And that second part is going to be, how do you start building your resume uh, so that you can be uh, a, a eligible employee and someone that when you get ready to walk into uh, at the, the um, store or business uh, and you want to apply for a job, they're gonna uh, pick your resume out uh, from the top of anybody else that's in that stack. And they're gonna call you up and say, hey, can you interview? And then after that interview, they're gonna say, hey, you know, you are the person that we are looking for. You have the skills and abilities to do the job. And uh, as a result of 4-H, you have learned the, the life skills that we need in employees to make our company the best it can be, and they're gonna offer you a job. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna turn it over to Michael. Michael awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks Tony, appreciate it. Hey guys, how are you guys all doing today? Hopefully you had uh, some fun today. Um, are you? When are you guys finished with school? Put it in the chat box when you're done with school for this year. Let me see, my, uh, my daughter's actually just finished today. So they are done, never, someone, wow, never, okay. A lifelong learner, that's great. Already done, some of you are already done, great. Last week, oh, yesterday, good. Nice, excellent, good. Well, some of you, June 2nd, wow, someone's still going, okay. Well, hopefully you guys have figured out what you're gonna do over the summer. I know a lot of states are closed down. A lot of states are, are still in those stay-at-home orders, uh, but hopefully you can have a little fun uh, this summer. Um, hopefully you joined, you were able to join us yesterday. Uh, we had a great time, you guys, uh, whoever was there, had a great time with you guys, got to know you a little bit. You guys shared some things, like the things you collected and different things. And so hopefully you got uh, some great takeaways from the message yesterday. So uh, today's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna dive into uh, strategies for an epic job interview. We're gonna talk a little bit about leadership as well. So if you do not have a pen and paper or something to take notes with, I suggest that you do that uh, as we go throughout because uh, you'll definitely wanna take notes today. Um, that will help you for sure. So um, first off, let me see if I'm gonna share my screen here and we'll get you guys all up and going. All right, can you see that screen? Put in there a thumbs up or whatever you wanna do, however you do that. Can you see that? All right, all right. Okay, so, uh, great, all right. So let's do this, let me share this and then we will uh, move forward on here. So hopefully you got a pen and paper uh, hopefully you guys are uh, ready to go. So today we're talking about 10 strategies to an epic job interview. I know some of you may have learned about uh, resume and get that all up and done today. Uh, that is super important as well uh, to have that resume up and going because that just shares a little bit about who you are and the things you have accomplished in the past. Um, and that helps uh, an employer really get to know uh, about you. So 
today, 10 strategies to an epic job interview. Okay. Um, here we go. A little bit about me. Okay. Uh, I like to have a lot of fun. So this is my wife. This is a picture of us. This was before uh, COVID-19. So there were no kids or uh, parks uh, hurt in any of these pictures. So this was pre-COVID-19. Uh, I just thought that was a fun, fun picture to take. And then here's my family. Um, so there's me. Uh, my oldest daughter, Olivia, uh, is 14. Our middle daughter, Mackenzie, is 11. And our youngest one is now three. So this picture is a little bit old. Uh, our youngest one is Eliana and then my wife, Renee. Uh, we have been married for uh, 16 years in July. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. My family's amazing. Uh, we live in Chicago, uh, Illinois area, uh, not in downtown Chicago, uh, but just in that area. So um, I would love to, to get to know where you guys are from. So in the chat box, uh, put the city uh, that you are from. Just throw that in there real quick. What city are you from? Plymouth. All right. Indiana, Penville, Fishers, Carlisle, Indianapolis, Warsaw. Nice. Anderson, nice. I know someone that is a uh, coach at Anderson University. I think that's where that is. Franklin, Indianapolis, Crown Point, Columbia City. Awesome, North Manchester. You said Munchie or Muncie? I'm not sure how you say that. I'm just going to go with Munchie. I think that sounds really cool. All right, cool. So uh, I moved around a lot. If you were on the on the uh, the session yesterday, uh, I was born in Virginia, moved to Wisconsin, lived in Las Vegas, lived in Denver, mainly raised in Wisconsin, and then uh, grew up in or after uh, Wisconsin, I went to college in Minnesota, and then we ended up in Chicago here about a year and a half ago. Um, my career, I've worked for a lot of different places. So uh, here are some of the, the, the biggest uh, employers that I've worked for uh, throughout my career. Uh, IBM, Target, Mayo Clinic, Amazon, uh, US Bank, Northwestern Mutual, and State Farm Insurance. Um, I've had a lot of uh, experience in interviewing. I've done a lot of, gone on a lot of interviews and done a, a lot of interviewing myself. And so I've learned a little bit along the way and that's what I wanna share with you guys. Uh, today as well. So um, also I've been speaking for uh, the last nine years. Um, I started speaking then uh, actually when I was working at Northwestern Mutual. Um, I was the technology coach and they had brought in a speaker who spoke uh, to the financial advisors and I uh, was really intrigued by that because I've always loved speaking in front of people and wasn't really ever nervous to do that. Um, and so I talked to him a little bit and uh, he said, yeah, this is what I do. I, I travel around. I can speak to people and help inspire them and motivate them. And I was like, man, if I could do that for students, that would be amazing. Uh, so I, I learned under a guy um, that, that spoke for a while and I started doing it then. And I love the opportunity to get to do it. I love 4-H. Um, I've been to, so this is my third time with Indiana 4-H. I've done uh, the other part of it, the, the, the high school side of it twice. Um, so that's, it's awesome. I love every opportunity to get to see, see you guys. So, so this is a little bit uh, about my uh, career journey. Um, so four things not to say in an interview, four things not to say in an interview. Number one, are all the workers here as cute as you? Don't say that. That is weird. <laughs> Please do not say that. Uh, number two, excuse me, can you pull my finger? I know some of you guys love that joke. Don't do that. Uh, they will definitely not want to interview you. They will stop the interview immediately and say, okay, we're done, no more. Uh, number three, how long will this take? My parole officer is waiting for me. Yeah, you, hopefully, hopefully you won't ever have to say that. And then number four, I like fire. That's weird, don't say that. We know you like fire, but don't say that in the interview, okay? That's how you get fired. Yes. Oh, Charlie. Okay. I see what you did there. That's how you get fired. Nice one, Charlie. All right. So here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, get a pen and paper. If you don't already have one, uh, we are going to uh, take a couple minutes and I want you guys to write down what kind of job would I like to have? Okay. So what kind of job would I like to have? And then after a minute, I want you guys to share. Um, so take uh, one minute. What kind of job would I like to have? Put your top three choices on there. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 
If you already know, go ahead and throw it in the chat. All right, doctor, engineer, FBI special agent. You might want to keep that on the down low, Rachel. You're not supposed to tell people that. All right, veterinarian, business, good. Caitlin, do you know what type of business you'd want to do? All right, agriculture, judge, psychologist, writer, actor, teacher. You could probably do all three. Politician focused on ag, awesome. Postal master, sweet. Engineer, marine biologist, baker, psychologist, doctor. Marketing, lawyer, something with the NBA. Nice, Justin. Hopefully by the time you get to that point, there'll actually be uh, a season. Photographer, entomologist, pilot, doctor, baker, musician, nurse, travel agent, missionary, vet, psychiatrist, nanny, teacher, teacher for a mission school, that's awesome, orthodontist, inventor, uh, veterinarian, pet store worker, zookeeper. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. Uh, hopefully you can do all those, Olivia. Uh, extra on the new Percy Jackson series. Definitely, definitely. If you want to do that, all you have to do is actually uh, Google extras. They cast all the time for series. Um, I live in Chicago, so they are casting all the time for different uh, TV series that they see here, especially those Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, all those. So look it up. That, that can help you with that. Sprint car driver, artist, nurse, anesthesiologist. Nice. You like pe making people go to sleep, Morgan. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Uh, police or politician? I don't know which one that is but hopefully you'll figure that out. All right, pet surgeon, travel agent. Yeah, awesome, these are all great. Excellent, okay. So um, next. So what qualifications do I have for the jobs that I've listed? Take 30 seconds, what qualifications do I have for the jobs listed above that you actually wrote down? If you know them, you can throw those in the chat box too. Good, McKinsey, you volunteer at the zoo. That's great. So if you wanna do something with animals, um, yeah, you build that experience. So qualifications are things that, that an employer see in you uh, that they would want to uh, have you in that job for. So what experiences have you had? Uh, what are your skills? What are your talents? Um, so that's what qualifications are. Chick-fil-A franchisee, Tyler, nice goal. Tyler, did you know that it is harder to become a Chick-fil-A franchisee than it is to get into Harvard University? That doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just, that's the stats. All right, good with measurements. That's great, Vince. Uh, Chase, extroverted, people lover, charming, assertive, driven, student council officer, excellent. Work on your own vehicle, Theodore. Cool. All right, great with animals, Olivia. Oh, wait. Wait, Olivia says, my name is Max, not Olivia. It says Olivia. I'm just reading <laughs> what it shows on here. Sorry, Max. All right, I like to read and write. Amara, excellent. I take interest in psychology. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so this is something that you want to continue to develop um, as you grow and as you think about the jobs that you want, right? You have to think about what qualifications do you have that an employer would like and look at hiring you. And so you can do that now. You might think like, oh, I'm, I'm maybe only in seventh grade. I, I'm not even thinking about work yet. However, you want to start building a resume now. You want to start building these experiences and these skills now. They're going to help you when you do apply for a job that they're going to look at you and say, great, these are the qualifications. These are the things we look at. So excellent job. All right, what can I do to be better qualified for these jobs? So these are something to think about. Um, what can I do to be better qualified uh, for these jobs? All right, here's a quote from Catherine Whitehorn. It says, find out what you like doing best and get someone to pay you for it. Find out what you like doing best and get someone to pay you for it. So uh, I think when I look at this quote and think about it, okay, so what are the things I love to do? What are the things that really uh, get me passionate that I love during the, during the day, during the week, during a month? What are those things that you truly enjoy doing? And then finding out how you can get someone to pay for it. So uh, I'll give you guys a great example. You speaking, okay? Um, I had no idea before that people got paid to do this or that it could be, even be possible to do it. Um, I wasn't looking for it. I told you guys my story a little bit. However, I felt like there's something that I could be good at. I think it's something that um, I love doing. It doesn't feel like work to me. Um, 
It's just something that I think my skills and talents uh, develop for. And so I didn't plan on you speaking. I didn't plan uh, to be able to do that. However, um, I networked with a lot of people and I developed those skills and continue to work on them. And you know what? I didn't know if it was going to work. And so sometimes you just have to take a step of faith and see what happens. Not everything is going to work out the way you want it to. However, each experience that you have helps you grow and get closer to ultimately what you want to be. So figure out what you're good out, good at and figure out, uh, get someone to pay you for it. Okay, number one, write this down. Interviewing is like dating, okay? I know some of you have maybe never ever dated before and that's okay. Let me talk about that, what that means. Okay, so number one, interviewing is like dating, okay? It should be a conversation. You should be finding out if you want to work for them as much as they want to hire you, okay? Um, just because someone wants to hire you doesn't mean that it's a great fit for you, okay? Um, there might be opportunities uh, for growth in that company. There might be things that you love about that culture of that company. Um, so for example, my oldest daughter, Olivia, she's 14 years old. She wants to work at Chick-fil-A. She, um, she has been there many times. We spent a lot of money <laughs> at Chick-fil-A, unfortunately. Um, but she loves what they do. She loves their culture. Um, she loves their food, first of all. Um, and so when you are interviewing, you have to treat it like a conversation. It's not an interrogation where they are just asking you questions and you not ask any questions of them. So treat it uh, like you're trying to figure out if you guys want to have a relationship with each other, company and you, okay? All right, number two, practice, practice, practice. This is very, very important that you take time to practice, okay? Practice helps build your confidence. Um, it helps you uh, answer questions properly. It helps you think about the ways you're going to answer things. Um, you can ask an adult to practice with you. So if you Google out there, interview questions, uh, interview practice questions, you'll come up with a ton of different things out there, okay? Um, so practice, 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 super important. Okay, and before, uh, so I want you guys to put in the comment box or chat box if you are currently working and what you do for work. Go and throw it in there if you do. I think I, my first job was when I was 13 years old. I'm not sure I was supposed to work, uh, but I did. So I lived in Wisconsin every Friday night. Um, I helped with a fish fry uh, during kind of Lent season. Um, so I was a bus boy. Uh, I just helped clear off dishes. They paid me like 20 bucks for a Friday night and I got a free meal out of it. So I was, I was over the top happy about that. Okay, so babysitter, parents own a business, you work for them, awesome. Weeding gardens, mowing lawns, cutting wood, babysitting, help the kids at the dance studio, that's awesome. Working at the zoo, do landscaping. Yeah, a lot of babysitting, a lot of opportunities. Birthday parties at gymnastics gym, concession stands, self-employed 3D artists. Charlie, you're gonna have to share with us some of your stuff so we can check it out. Do you have a website or anything, Charlie? If not, throw it in there. Or if you do, throw it in there. Bash, Adeline, what is Bash? Let me know what that means. First job was at Indiana State Fair. Nice. Uh, work on the farm. Excellent grace. During the summer, you help your dad with his dentistry. Huh. Interesting. Weeding the garden, lawn mowing, uh, garden for later church. Yeah, anything you do for work, doesn't have to be official work, but anything you do that someone pays you for, um, I would look at that as work. So that's totally good. Volunteer at the library. Okay, that brings up a good point, Lucy. Thank you for putting that. Okay. You can build experiences with volunteering as well. You don't have to get paid for something. Um, volunteer at your church, volunteer at the library, volunteer at your school, whatever you can do to help you build those uh, communi uh, those skills that will transfer to a job, take every opportunity to do that. Um, right now, especially uh, it being summer and you're being done with school, <clears throat> um, you have the opportunity to do that. So make sure you volunteer as much as you can as well. All right, cool, great, excellent. Thanks for sharing that, guys. Okay, so here's a little bit. I know sometimes we say that we don't have enough time in the day and that uh, we don't have anything, we, we don't have time to do anything, we don't have time to practice, we don't have time to work on our careers, uh, but uh, that's not true. Here's some ways that you can uh, work on time management, okay? So time after time. Number one, learn to say no. You have to learn to say no. A lot of times we just want to please people and we want to say yes, and that fills up our schedule too much. 
um, we're going to have to sometimes say no to good things. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to help you in your time management overall. Um, and also saying no defines who you are a lot of times too. So make sure that you start practicing saying no and not feeling bad about it. Okay. All right. Second one, make a to-do list every day, make a to-do list every single day. Um, so I know a lot of people love making to-do lists at the point that they will write on the top of their to-do list, make a to-do list just so they can check it off. Um, but this is important to keep you focused on your priorities. Um, so what you want to do, let me give you a little example here. I've got this board for you. Okay, so we got this little board here. This is a, a little list that we're going to make. All right, so to-do list. To do this. This is my to do list. Here we go. So you're going to start making your to do list. Maybe some of you guys already do this. That's great. Okay. So da 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 da. Feed the dog, clean my room, practice my instrument, play sport, crush people in Mario Kart. Okay. So here's my list. I didn't actually write it, but you can see it here. So what's really important to do is prioritize your list. Okay. So what I do is start with the most important things and I mark those with the letter A. So we'll do that one and that one. So those are the top two priorities that, I, that those are the ones that you have to get done today. You can't wait till tomorrow. They must be done today. And then the next kind of phase is B, right? So you can write the letter B. What's next important that I probably should get done today, but if it doesn't get done, that's okay. Um, but I'd really like to get it done today if I could. And then C. These are things that I can wait to get done. If I have everything else done, they don't have time to do those. If I have to push, push those off till tomorrow, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. So that's C. So that's a great way um, to, uh, to work on a list. So, okay, uh, next one, get a mentor. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Um, get a mentor, get someone that's gonna help you pursue things in your career, help you grow in the things that you wanna do. Uh, make sure they have time um, to chat with you and answer any questions. Okay. Number next one is rest. You must rest. I think a lot of times we just go, 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 go. And we don't take time to rest and think about uh, what we're doing throughout the day. Think about what our week's going on. And so it's super important that you guys take time to do that. Um, <clears throat> next one is take time to escape. So what are your hobbies? What are the things you like to do? Um, what are the things that are going to help you uh, grow in your goals and your dreams and um, your eventual job that you want to do. So make sure that you have some type of escape, some type of hobby you can do um, to help you grow. It, it can be, I, I want that to be fun. Like that's what I want to do. Like I love playing sports. Um, I love uh, spending time with my family, traveling. Um, so there's some things that I do. Uh, next one is decide what's important. <clears throat> what are your priorities? What are the things that's important to you? Um, is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it your faith? Uh, is it school? Is it uh, student leadership organizations? So what are the things that are most important to you? And make sure you prioritize that with your time. Uh, next one is be bad on purpose. Someone asked a question about that. So Lucas said, why would you be bad on purpose? Okay, so here, here, here's what I mean by that. Um, choose what you're going to be bad at. You're not going to be good at everything. Um, I think sometimes we get this uh, perfectionist mentality that we uh, have to be good at everything or we're just not going to do it. And I, th I, don't, I don't believe that. Um, you're going to be bad at some things. And so choose the things that you're going to be bad at because anytime you start something that you've never done before, everyone starts at the bottom and they have to grow their way up, right? So when I started speaking, I had no idea if I was going to totally bomb, if anything would work. Um, I had no clue, but I chose to be bad on purpose so that I could get better. Because if we wait till the day that we're perfect at something before we start it, we're never going to start it. I guarantee you, we're never going to start it. Um, the problem, see, I, I'm really good at starting books. I'm not very good at finishing them. So I'm, I've started a million books and then I kind of get bored halfway through or uh, sometimes I go to the end to read the ending, which is horrible. Don't do that. Um, but you have to choose to be bad on purpose at some things. You just have to start and see what happens. Okay. So hopefully that explains that to you, Lucas. And the next one, the 80-20 rule. If you guys have never heard of this, um, this is a great rule um, that actually just happens. So nothing you have to follow, uh, but it just happens. So 20% of your time will give you 80% of the results. 
20% of the time will give you 80% of the results. So typically it's those things that we find that help us grow the most, okay? Um, and this kind of this kind of works out in a lot of different areas in life. So think about a group project at school. Usually 20% of the people do 80% of the work, right? Yeah. Um, think about your clothes. You typically wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time, right? I know my wife, she has a lot of clothes. And she says, I don't have any clothes. And I go in her closet, I was like, what are all these? Um, and so we all tend to flock to those things that we really like in our wardrobe. And we wear only 20% uh, of our things 80% of the time. Um, so those are just some things that'll help you uh, with time management rule, okay? All right. All right, number three, research the company. Research the company, okay? Um, you have to know that company in and out. If that's a place that you really wanna work at, you have to know their culture, you have to know um, their competitors, you have to know uh, what makes them who they are, how they started, um, how, they, how they do the things that they do, the operations that they have. Uh, so you have to know that company in and out, right? Um, look on the internet, find out about them, find out about their owners, their leadership, uh, what they do, uh, make sure you know um, why they do what they do, because the why behind what a company does is very important. So make sure you research that company above all. All right. <clears throat> Number four, dress to impress, okay? <laughs> when you go to an interview, dress to impress. Uh, don't wear, don't wear your best Steph Curry jersey, okay? Do not wear this to an interview, all right? They're gonna be like, what the heck are you doing? All right, if you have some nice clothes, go ahead and wear them, right? You got a dress shirt, you got a tie, you have a dress, whatever that is for you, um, make sure you, that you look good because the first impression are very important. Um, they say that recruiters spend about five seconds on a resume. That's it, five seconds on a resume. So they look at it, the first impression is very important. Um, and be quite honest, people, people, we judge people all the time, right? We judge them on their looks. Sometimes we don't mean to do it. Sometimes we do. Uh, is, that, is that fair to do? No. Um, however, that we are, uh, we're visual people. We look at uh, our first impressions. We look at the things they are. And so unfortunately, companies do the same thing. And so you want to make sure that you put your best foot forward, no matter, no matter what. So dress to impress. Um, don't overdress. Um, so if you are going for a job that, uh, you know, they wear jeans and, and boots and it works on a farm. If you're wearing a three-piece suit and a vest and shiny shoes, that might be overdressing as well. So um, <clears throat> try on your outfit the night before. That's really important too. So if you have some clothes that maybe you haven't worn in a while or um, they don't work, just make sure that you try it on before. You can see if it has any stains. You can see if it just feels right because you want to feel comfortable. You want to feel confident when you go into that interview as well. So make sure that you do that, okay? All right, next one, relax. So during the interview, you relax. Uh, all right, let me check. I think someone had some questions. Do I wear makeup? If you feel comfortable wearing, wearing makeup, wear makeup. That's totally okay. Whatever you feel is gonna help you be the most confident, um, the most uh, relaxed in that environment, you do that as, as well. So um, great, any other questions about the, no, cool. Okay, so relax. So during the interview, relax. Every person that interviews is nervous. You are not the only one, okay? So some things to help you, breathe. You can breathe during an interview, right? You can smile during an interview, okay? And also speak up. So when they ask you a question, give eye contact, speak up, be confident in your answers um, on what you are going uh, to say. So brings us to our next one. Number six, think before answering. Think before answering. When they ask you a question, it's okay to take a few seconds to gather your thoughts and think uh, before your answer. Um, so it's to your advantage to take that time before answering it. It helps you kind of put your thoughts together. Um, you don't wanna make up your answer. Uh, because people know when you're doing that. So do not do that. Don't lie. Don't make up things. Don't, don't exaggerate your experiences or your, um, or your uh, resume. Do not do that. They, they will know that you were doing that. Um, so probably something that they talked about today. 
you have to know your resume, know your resume inside and out, know that you are putting on um, the, the things that you're putting on your resume, your experiences, your examples, all that stuff, make sure you know it um, so that you can speak to that on your resume, uh, bring extra copies of it uh, so that you can hand out if they don't have one, it makes you just look way more prepared, okay? Um, yeah, be able to, to have an example for anything that you have on your resume. So if you put down that you helped a customer and you gained uh, 10 customers, uh, make sure that, that you can speak to that on, on how you did that, what those results are. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, sometimes what we say isn't as important than how we say it. So our body language is very important too. So if you answer a question, you got crossed arms and you're looking all sad and you're like, yeah, um, I help sales grow like 20%. That's not really engaging, right? You might have helped sales grow 20%, but they're probably not going to be impressed by that, right? Unless you say, and they ask you a question, you say, okay, um, yes, I, I helped sales grow 20%. I was one of the top producers in the company. So you gave good eye contact. You were confident in what you said. Um, you knew the results and the things you had to do to make it uh, a very great example for them. So make sure that you know what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Okay, here is a great way to answer a question. So definitely write this down. This is going to help you. So this is the STAR method, STAR method. It's an acronym. Uh, the S is for situation. So what was the situation? What were you tasked to do? Which kind of flows into the next one. The T is for task. So those two sometimes are a little bit combined. Um, so what was the situation and the task? I'll give you guys an example once we walk through this a little bit. Um, what was the action that you took? What did you do in that situation? And then the R is for result. What was the end result, okay? So star method, make sure you write that down. Very important. So here is an example of, of, of the star method. So when I was at my last job, I dealt with a customer who was very upset. She had an error on her bill. I took ownership of the situation and was able to get the charge reversed for her. <clears throat> um, so as you can see, that's the situation and the task. Um, and then I have the, the action that I took, right? I was able to get the charge reverse for her, give her credit for the inconvenience. Um, end result, the customer was happy and she ended up telling her friends, right? And so that's a good example of, uh, of the STAR method that you can use uh, in that example. All right, number seven, take notes, take notes. So you wanna have something with you that, can, that you can take notes with. Um, don't bring one of these, That'll, that's just weird. Don't do that. Um, I would highly suggest not using your phone or an iPad to take notes either. Um, get like a nice looking um, kind of like, you can find like leather folders out there or portfolios, pad folios they're called. Um, and it has a notepad on the inside, bring a pen. That, that way you can have your extra copies of your resume with. Um, you can look at uh, Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, all those office places have those for you. So I would definitely recommend that you do that. So you're gonna take notes and it's okay to take notes throughout the interview. So what I have done in the past is I had notes on the top and then on the bottom, I had questions that I wanted to ask for the interview. So I can take notes throughout. You can still make great eye contact while you take notes um, and then have your questions right on the bottom so that you're ready to go, uh, ready to be able to ask those questions. Because the worst thing that you can do is during the interview when they give you that time at the end and they say, do you have any questions? The worst thing you can do is say, no, or I'm good. You wanna have questions, you wanna have those thought out. Um, you can definitely look into those and research on what questions you should ask someone um, during an interview. Uh, there's so many examples out there, put some together, put it on a notepad, let them know that you researched the company and that you want to be a part of that, right? So that's a huge thing to do. All right, next one, eight, watch your language, watch your language. This isn't just about dropping F-bombs in an interview. So number one, yes, do not swear during an interview. That just does not make you look professional. Um, so don't do that. No fillers. Do you guys know what fillers are, right? Like, uh, um, ah, uh, okay, those are filler words. Sometimes we just do it as a natural thing as part of our language. We have to consciously think about not giving fillers at all. So I'm thinking about that right now, trying to not do that. So, oh, and like, oh man, like is a huge one. 
like I totally do like a great job of like babysitting and like um, they really like like me like like I probably said like about 10 times right don't do that um, and <laughs> Amelia I don't think that that's <laughs> and I oop okay anyway <clears throat> yes Lucas you I think you named all the fillers so yep there's a lot of people like that so yeah try to work on that okay um, so language, like we talked about before, isn't just what comes out of your mouth. There is body language as well. So are you having good eye contact? Um, are you, is your, are, sometimes I remember I've been so nervous in an interview, like my hands are shaking and then they get cold and I have to like, I kind of rub them together to make them warm, but you should be relaxed. You should think about that. Um, you, you are already a part of this company. Okay. So that helps you look at the interviewer as more of a peer. Than they do than you do so peers like someone you work with uh, someone who's on your same level then it does that they are going to be your boss and they are basically defining your future for you okay uh so make sure you do that don't cross your arms okay this just i know sometimes it's relaxing to do that um <laughs> and don't stare lucas uh eye contact also me your eyes are pretty dude that's one of the things you should not say during an interview did you not listen, Lucas? Okay. Um, and then give a firm handshake. I know right now we, you don't want to touch anyone's hand and you probably want to bring sanitizer to the interview because um, who knows what's going on. So uh, that's typically what you should do. Okay. So that's during the interview. So now we're going to give you some things. To, to, don't fist bump, Charlie. That's, that, that just is not professional. So if they go to give you a handshake and you're like, yeah, don't do that. Not professional. Okay, so here are some things to do after the interview, okay? That's our next one. Do not elbow rub either, that's weird. All right, send a thank you. Send a thank you. So what that looks like, um, I know in the past, some people, there's kind of a debate about whether an email is fine or not. Um, if you can get their address and get a handwritten note to them, I would highly suggest that. Um, that just goes kind of a little bit above and beyond. Um, an email is also fine. Uh, as long as you keep it short and concise and just, you know, basically I would say, thank you for the opportunity. I feel my skills are a great fit for the position. I look forward uh, to hearing back from you. So you do a quick email like that. Don't give your resume again. Don't be weird about it. Um, just help them know those things a little bit. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Number 10, be patient, be patient. A lot of times inter interviews are, uh, they're looking at a lot of candidates. They have a lot going on. You're not the only thing that's happening in their life. And so we need to be patient. I know for some of you right now, you're like, okay, I, I need a job. I need to get going. I don't even know what's going on. Um, but you have to take time. You have to slow down and be patient. Like we talked about yesterday, everyone has a different journey that they're on. Um, I know that we can be inspired by someone's career path. Um, or be mad, maybe they got the, jo the job uh, in front of you, um, but you need to slow down, be patient, slow, make it slow like a snail. That's right, you guys like that snail, don't you? It's good. All right, <clears throat> so don't be a stalker either. If you haven't heard back from them after a week, that's fine to send a follow-up email, just reiterating, especially if they gave you a timeline. So what you wanna do at the end of an interview <clears throat> is thank them for the opportunity, and, and let them know that you really want the job and you really look forward to hearing back from them. It's very important that they know that you want to have the job because you can go through the interview and you can say that, oh, I really like it, um, that I'd, I'd really like to be a part of here, a part of this uh, company. You want to reiterate that throughout the whole uh, job interview so that they know. They know that you uh, want to be there, that you want to be a part of it, okay? Um, so <clears throat> some things that are going to help you in that is it's gonna help you grow in your leadership as well. So you guys are in 4-H right now. Um, that's a great thing to add to your resume. Um, that's a great thing to, to have on there. Um, some things that are gonna help you become a better employee as well when you get to that point um, <clears throat> is leadership areas to keep in check. So there's four I want you guys to write down. Uh, and you guys will hopefully recognize some of these. Um, so the first one is heart, heart. So a question to ask yourself about that is do I wanna be a self-serving leader? or a servant leader? Do you want to be a self-serving leader or a servant leader? Um, what is the difference between those two things to you guys? Put it in the chat box. What is the difference between a self-serving leader and a servant leader?
Bueller. Yep, selfish versus selfless. Good. Yep, it's about you or is it about others? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think there's kind of this myth out there that leaders are at the top and, you know, they get the best of everything. And no, actually, a leader is someone that serves others, right? Um, a leader is someone that serves others. So one thing to, to keep in check for you. Number two is head. What's in your head? What are the priorities that you set in your life? You need to decide what you believe um, and what you're going to do. You need to make that decision for yourself. So are your priorities set in life? If not, you need to think about those things, okay? Uh, number three is hands, hands. Do your actions reflect your heart and your head, okay? Do your outward actions reflect your heart and your head? Meaning, are you the same person in front of one crowd that you are with another, okay? So do those outward actions reflect uh, what's going on in your heart and your head? Number four, do daily, uh, number four is habits, habits. So heart, head, hands, habits. Do daily discipline decisions lead your life? Do daily discipline decisions lead your life? So think about a big door, the biggest door you've ever seen. Um, one the biggest door I've ever seen was in Washington, D.C. at the, uh, it was some big museum. I don't even know what it is, but it was like 30 feet tall, okay? So you think about a door, um, they have hinges on the back of the door, right? So hinges are the things that make the door swing. So it's these small little things that make big moves in our lives. And so what is it that you're doing daily and you're disciplined on that is helping you grow uh, in the things that you want to grow in and the, in the decisions that you want to make and the job that you eventually want to get. Uh, maybe it's band or choir or a uh, leadership organization, whatever that is for you, are those daily disciplined decisions leading your life, okay? So here's uh, eight more principles I want to give you guys uh, that leaders look at. Number one is learn, learn. Uh, great leaders always continue to learn. Uh, they never stop learning. So make sure you guys are doing things that help you learn. Um, they say that the average millionaire reads one nonfiction book a month. Uh, the average millionaire reads one nonfiction book a month, which means they are reading about uh, things that are helping them grow in their business, helping them grow uh, for them personally. Um, so, you know, you guys have probably heard the, the, the quote, readers are leaders are readers, not readers are leaders. Well, that, that would work too. Uh, leaders are readers. So do things that are going to help you grow uh, who you are as a person and help you lead. Um, next one, concern. So be concerned about how you communicate. This is all about communicating well. So leaders are concerned about how they communicate. So you want to write clearly. You want to listen actively. So here's the thing. Listening is very important. When uh, a teacher or a parent tells you to do something, do you follow right away or do you kind of procrastinate? Um, do you, did you even listen to what they were saying? So listen uh, actively, value other people's input. That's really important. Uh, the next one is turn. Uh, this is about turning to wise people, okay? Um, you want people that are wiser than you to help you grow. If you think about even the top athletes, um, they raise their hand. Uh, I'm sorry, they don't raise their hand. <laughs> sorry, I just saw Lucy, you raised your hand. Let me see if we can get Lucy on here. Uh, Lucy, did you have a question? Do you want to do you want to type it in the chat box? No. Okay. All right, Lucy did not mean to raise her hand. That's all right, Lucy. It happens to the best of us. Okay. So even top athletes have coaches. Okay. Think about basketball, right? Uh, some of the top players, LeBron James, Steph Curry, these guys, they still have coaches who help them grow. Think about Olympic athletes. They have people who help them grow. Uh, the top singers, uh, they still have vocal coaches that help them grow in who they are because they know that there's that we need wise people in our lives to help us grow. So maximize those relationships. Um, one of the best things you can do is networking, okay? Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So recently, um, I wanna give you guys some job stats here, uh, what that looks like. So this is a real example of me. Um, a while back, I had uh, applied for a job. I was looking for a, a new career to kind of help supplement speaking. And so uh, I had sent in, I applied to 10 different companies, 10 different applications. I only heard back from 10 of them. I only got callbacks from 10 of them, only heard back saying we're potentially interested in you, wanted to get a little more information. Uh, so they did a phone interview, right? 
three of those, only three of those turned into an in-person interview. So I got to go uh, sit down with the company, uh, learn a little bit about them, me learning, of, uh, them learning about me, uh, kind of what we talked about that interviewing is kind of like dating, right? You want to know if you both are interested in the other person. And then I, I got one job interview. So 100 applications, 10 callbacks, three in-person interviews, one job offer. That's it. So there is a lot of competition out there for jobs. And it's okay that you don't get a callback or an interview for every job that you apply for, because most likely it's not going to happen. Sometimes that when we apply for something, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They maybe have found, found their candidate already. Um, there's a lot of different things that go into the place. So don't take it hard. Don't take it that, that you failed in your life or in your life, but in this particular instance in your life. Okay. So it, it was very, what, what I say was discouraging. Absolutely. Was it frustrating? Absolutely. But we have to keep going and try and try and try. If I would have, if I would have given up on at uh, 90 applications, right. If I would not have sent those additional applications, I would have never got those 10 callbacks. I've never got those three in-person interviews and I would have never gotten that job offer. So it's really important that you keep chugging along and use failure as a stepping stone to get to success. And that's what makes people successful. Okay, so here's how jobs are filled. 80% of jobs are filled by networking, meaning that they are not sent out online, that you cannot find them online, um, that if you do, they're probably already filled. Okay, so that's where the other comes in. The other is 20% of jobs that are actually listed online. So there are some uh, job sites that you can find out there. Uh, LinkedIn is a good one. So LinkedIn.com. Um, another one is Indeed.com. That's another good one that link that uh, has jobs. Um, your schools might actually have uh, opportunities that they show in their career centers if they have anything like that, or talking to a guidance counselor. Okay, so this is why networking is really really important. Most of the jobs that I got throughout my career is was because I knew someone. So I didn't get the job that I, because I knew someone, but I got an opportunity to get the job because I knew someone. So they knew that there was a job opening that um, maybe that person left right away. And so you get the opportunity to hear uh, about the job before anyone else does. So number one, if they can't fill it with someone that's already already inside their company, that's kind of the first place that employers look. Why? Is because they want someone who's like-minded, who um, they can already trust, who they know their work ethic already for their company. And so they're usually, they're filled internally or they're filled by someone that already works at the company that knows somebody. Why? Because typically um, if that person is an awesome employee, their friends are probably gonna be similar as well, right? We talked about yesterday that you become the five closest people to you. Why? Because you pick up on their habits, you pick up on their likes, you pick up on their dislikes. So networking is one of the most important things you can do in your career. So what does that look like? Um, that looks like uh, talking to people, right? Uh, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, collecting business cards from people, going to businesses um, that you know of that you are interested in and asking to shadow for a day, um, asking to shadow for um, a week, a month, whatever. That means interning. That means volunteering. That means talking to people, asking good questions. And so when you network, that that's going to help you tremendously. When you get to that point that you're like, man, I, I, I want a career. I want a job. Um, who do I know that can help me with that? Okay. So networking is one of the most important things you can do. So make sure you guys do that. Uh, Lucy said a lot like scholarships. Absolutely. Uh, same thing too. So there's a lot of competition out for those. Um, you need to make sure that you're doing the, everything you can do um, to help you grow in that, okay? All right, leaders, uh, also earn. This is about earning trust. Um, leaders earn trust. They build trust. Um, so this is uh, a huge thing for integrity. So what, what does integrity mean to you guys? Put that, put that in the chat box. What, what is integrity? Yep, trust, loyalty. Yep, doing what's right when no one is there. Honor, reliability, hardworking, yep. Dependability, trust, honesty, responsibility, definitely Rachel. Yep, those are all definitely parts of integrity for sure. 
Yep, doing the right thing with no one when no one is looking. Uh, if are you the same person when people are there versus when people are not there, right? That is the key to integrity. Do they know that they can trust you? Do they know that you're going to be committed? Do they know that you're going to show up on time? Because employers are looking for that. They want to know that they can rely on you and that you're going to be committed to say you're going to be there when you're going to be there. You guys probably have friends like this, but um, when you ask them if they want to hang out or do something, they always say maybe, maybe, right? They want to leave it open that if something better comes along, that they won't feel as bad at ditching you. And then they go to this new thing. So um, I always, I have a friend like that and I always say, no, 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 there's no maybe. It's either yes or no. Like, if you want to hang out with me, say yes. If you don't, then say no. That's okay. But don't say maybe because I don't want to wait and figure this out. And so you have to make sure that when you say something that you follow through on your commitments, you stick to your word. When you say you're going to be there, you're going to be there. Unless you're sick or something happens, right? Uh, you have to be committed. Because especially as a young person, that is one of the biggest things that employees are looking for. They have to know that they can rely on you. They have to know that they can trust you to be there when they say you're going, when you say you're going to be there. Okay. Uh, number six, discern, uh, think critically. So think critically about um, decisions, think critically about your answer. Um, a lot of times we have to probe beyond the first right answer. It might be an answer, it might seem right, but we have to probe beyond what that right answer is and anticipate the outcomes of our decisions. Like we talked yesterday, right now, you guys are making some of the biggest decisions in your life that could impact your, uh, the rest of your life, right? So you have to make those decisions and don't let life happen by chance, make it happen by choice. Choose to be a great employee. Choose to be one of the best employees that they can. Maybe, maybe you're not as skilled um, in, uh, or talented as maybe some of the other people there. However, trustworthiness, uh, goes a long, long way. So um, definitely something you want to continue to work on, okay? And then churn, churn, C-H-U-R-N, churn. Never be the same, never be stagnant, always look for opportunities to improve and to grow, okay? Um, like we talked about yesterday, don't settle for average, go for greatness. You're greater than those things that hold you back. You're greater than the things um, that you're fearful of. You're greater than your excuses. You're greater than procrastination. Um, you're greater than failure. And failure is something that you have to go through to get to where you want to be. I have failed so many times in my life so far. <clears throat> Some of those things were because of me. Some of those were not, right? Um, but each failure, we learn and we grow and we get closer to ultimately where we want to be. All right. So here's the deal. What I want you guys to do is put in the chat box, again, uh, one thing, one takeaway that you took uh, from, this, uh, from this workshop, right? One takeaway that you're going to, uh, that you took away from this workshop. Your failure is a stepping stone. Excellent. Research the company. The STAR method, for sure. That's something you have to practice. Uh, what not to say in an interview. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, yep, learn to say no. Be honest, true self, and be your true self in an interview. That's what they want. Yep, keep improving. Never be stagnant. Never stay the same. Yeah, learn to say no. And honestly, you guys, that takes practice. Uh, that's really hard to do because we want everyone to like us. Um, but unfortunately, not everyone is going to like us. And so... Uh, sometimes we feel like saying no is letting people down. You have to learn to say no. Um, I need to become friends with people. Yes, networking. Okay, so here's the deal. <clears throat> For some of you that are more introverted, I know that seems like it could be an impossible task to you. But if you really listen to people, <clears throat> you can see how they interact. You can see the questions that they ask. And so something like I try to teach my daughters too because they're more introverted is about asking great questions of people. And so when someone asks, if a teacher asks you, hey, how was your weekend? You can say good or fine and talk to them. But really a great conversation is the other person asking as well. Well, thank you for asking, how was your weekend, right? Um, you can add things onto the conversation. You can ask great questions. That's a huge deal. All right, time management. Great, uh, Kaden, or Angel, sorry. Uh, Kaden, you had think what I can and cannot, not what I can't. Yep, think about what you can do and not what you can't do. Research the company, star method. 
Don't let fear hold you back. Back practice. Send a thank you after. That is huge, huge, huge to send a thank you after. Uh, continue to become a better person. Absolutely never stop, never stop learning, never stop growing. Prepare and plan. Yep, practice. You have to practice. Don't say um. That takes practice too, Justin. It's okay. Um, I see, I almost just did it. Dang it. Don't elbow pump your employer. <laughs> Please don't do that. That's weird. Uh, what not to say, send a thank you. Eight tips, good. Uh, everyone is nervous. Yes, every single person is nervous, I guarantee. Uh, time management, excellent. No, just say no. Work hard and do good, definitely. All right, so if you guys would like, I can send you uh, this, this uh, slide sheet so you have that. If you wanna have it for notes and, def and anything else, I'll put it in the chat box um, just so you guys can have that, okay? Um, and also, if you wanna follow me on social media, I would love to follow you. So uh, Instagram at MC Speaker, Facebook at MC Speaker. Um, you guys can follow me. I will respond to any message. I will follow you back. And then I would love to hear about when you do get a job, when you get to that point, you share it with me, let me know. Let me know if some of these things helped you in that. If you have an interview, let me know as well. Um, if you need some other resources, uh, you can definitely ask me. I would love to help in any way that I can, um, just because I'm here for you guys. Ask a question, you're good to go. So I wanna leave some a couple minutes here. If you guys have questions um, on anything uh, throughout the time we talked about today, throw it in the bottom, I will answer it for you. We'll give it a couple minutes for that. So any questions you have um, about what we went over today or any questions in careers overall, throw it in the chat box. Uh, so if you want to create a resume, yeah, definitely. Send me your resume. I'd love to help you look at it. Um, I've had to redo my resume a million times. No, you're not getting my mom's Instagram account, Murphy. Nice try. All right, what kind of things go on resumes? Okay, so resume, there's a lot of different examples that are out there for that. <clears throat> However, uh, something that, that I do is at the top, um, you can have a summary of your skills. Um, you, and then you put your work history, right? Or your volunteer history or um, the things. So your volunteer history, you can Google this a little bit, Samantha too, but just some top things, right? Um, so the history, your history, um, the things that you did at that employer, how long you were there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other things to look at. So Google some resumes. Let me know if you have more questions on that. Um, what are some things that would look good on your resume? So depending on uh, your, your job experience, depending on your volunteer experience, if you volunteered at church, if you uh, volunteer with anything else, um, put those on there put your experiences. Um, so you can definitely see a lot of different examples out there of different resumes. It would just depend on the job that you're going for. So if you want to get a job at Chick-fil-A, honestly, I would literally Google Chick-fil-A resume. And there's probably some instances that uh, people have put on there that, that can help you. So basically you want to be able to tie your resume to that specific job as much as you can. So if you see a job out there and you find a job description, those are the key things that they're looking for for someone. And so you need to make sure that you tailor those, the, your experiences to those job descriptions. Not lie about it, not uh, exaggerate about it, but um, yeah, make sure you tailor that to that. Uh, no, uh, Charlie, I'm not a black belt in karate. I know I got some wicked awesome ninja moves, but no. How do you find out what kind of job you would want? So how could you find out what kind of job you would want? This just, uh, sometimes this takes looking at what things you like to do. Um, definitely job shadowing is a huge one, Katie. So you can go and see uh, what a job would even be like. And yeah, that's the biggest thing is job shadowing for sure. Will the recording be available? Yes, I believe so, Dominic. Uh, how many references should be added? Okay, that's a, that's a huge one. Um, some people say don't put refer references on a resume that is not completely necessary. Um, I agree with that because if they want to, if they are interested in you, then they'll ask for references. Um, I don't think it's necessary to put on a resume. They're not gonna look at that because in those first five seconds, it doesn't matter 
if there's references on the bottom, if they're looking at the top uh, part of it. So um, yeah, any other questions you guys have, you can certainly uh, send me um, a message on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to, to answer those anytime for you. I'll make sure we put the, um, uh, the link for this slideshow in the chat for you guys, and we can send that out as well. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Hopefully you take, took some great notes and uh, you guys are awesome. I hopefully someday we can meet in person. Thank you guys very much. Great. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate uh, you taking time out of your schedule to be with us. And it looks like from some of the things that people put in the chat box that they certainly did learn um, quite a bit uh, today from your presentation. If you'll send me your slide deck, I'll be glad to post those on our website so that they can be available. Last night, the recording of yesterday's video has already been posted. And so you're welcome to see that. And then as soon as we get this one uh, finished up, we'll uh, have it uh, posted sometime tomorrow as well. And so with that, I just want to thank Michael for uh, being with us and being part of uh, Indiana 4-H program. Also want to thank our sponsors for, uh, again, for allowing us to be able to, to have Michael and uh, to be able to continue to support our 4-H Roundup program. And those sponsors are being the Indiana State Department of Agriculture, Siri Solutions, and um, Corteva, along with the Indiana 4-H Foundation. And so I want to close out by inviting everyone to uh, contact your county extension educator to learn about other uh, trips and opportunities that are available statewide that you can participate in. And uh, hopefully we'll see most of you uh, next year at 4-H Roundup on campus at Purdue University. And again, check with your county educator about that. So with that, um, we are going to say goodbye and I wish everyone a great evening and have a great rest of your summer. Thank you.